Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I done my point shoes. I'm sorry, I honestly have not put any makeup on and I just woke up so I'm in my pyjamas but I'm not going to change because I'm literally just darning my shoes right now. Obviously darning is very personal and you don't have to do it, not everyone does darn their shoes. But there's a lot of different ways to darn them. I didn't always darn them the same way I'm going to show you today. But just keep in mind you don't have to darn your shoes this way. It's very, very personal. And this is just the way that I found is the quickest and easiest for me. And still gives me the result that I want. I will show you a pair that I just did yesterday. Just so you can see kind of how it looks when it's finished. So this was the pair that I did yesterday. This is how it kind of looks. So I didn't always used to do it like this. I used to do it a lot thinner and it didn't really do anything. It was more just almost like for the aesthetic and making my shoes look nicer, I think. But this definitely does a lot more like helping with balance and creating sort of more of a platform. But yes, yeah, so that is what we're aiming for today. And that's what I'll teach you to do in today's video. Also, hopefully not, but if you do hear any banging in the background, it's just the renovation going on in our home at the moment so don't mind that but anyways let's get straight into the video and show you how to down your point shoes like me okay so first things first i'm just going to show you what you need your point shoes obviously a quite thick darning needle let's just see if this will focus this one has oh my gosh this one has a very big hole to put the the thread through and it's very thick and sturdy. You can get them at any sort of craft store, anywhere like that. Some scissors to cut the wool and your wool. Um, this one is just like, I'm not sure how thick it is, but it's just again from a craft store. You can use white or some people use pink and this is the kind I like to use. You can use a lot thinner and just kind of like double or triple it up, but this is the one I like to use. And then any extra things you might want is an iPad or TV to watch some entertainment in the background, maybe a podcast or an audiobook, just because you're going to be doing this for a little bit. And you do get quicker with time, but it is time consuming. And maybe a drink on the side if you want that. Also, I just realised you might be like, where is she sitting right now? I'm on my little fold-up bed in my sister's room because that's where I'm sleeping at the moment because of the renovations in our house. So it kind of looks like a hospital bed. Don't mind that. Anyways, straight into the video. Let's go. Okay, first thing, you're going to get just a really long piece of thread. That would probably be enough, like, as long as your arms. But I like to get even more, so it's literally like this. And I do have a lot in the end, so if you don't want to waste it, don't use this much. But I just like to be sure. So that is probably going to be enough. Just like that. That's literally how I do it. Just a lot and you're going to thread it through the needle sometimes you need to do that to make sure it is easy to go through okay then you pull it through um and what i used to do i used to just knot one end and then just kind of work with that and then like this would just be going through with it but now i like to double it up on itself so get the other end Make sure it's even. Doesn't have to be perfect though. And then that's what you've got. Then you're gonna get the string and just do a loop, tie a knot. Okay, just in case you didn't see that, I'm literally just tying a knot at the end with both of them. But I get the string, I'm holding it like this around there and then pull it through to tie a knot like that I hope that makes sense just a knot very simple and then pull it really really tight so that knot is very strong Ow. and then you have the needle ready to go then you're gonna need your point shoe and the thread and I just what I do is I get my four fingers and I'm going to wrap the wool around that and that is going to be the size that goes on my point shoes. 
So I'm not literally just darning and threading around to make it thick. I get a layer of wool and put a circle and then I sew around that, essentially. So what I do is I just get my hand, I put it on, oh my gosh, this is hard, like this. And for me, that's fine. That's like the same width as this. I'll show you. Okay, so I just do this and I go around once, twice, three, four, five, six. Six times. And then kind of looks like that. And then you just cut it off, bring it off your fingers and then just hold it like that make sure the ends don't kind of unravel and then I put it on the edge of my point shoe like this and then it should look like that on the edge my fingers are like the perfect amount to for the width of my point shoe, like the base of my point shoe, but you might need to figure out a way to sort of measure it for the six rounds. You can do more rounds as well, you could do seven or five if you need, however many you want, and it just depends how thick you want this base layer. I don't want it too thick, but I want it enough to do something, but yeah, so you'll have to go around, I don't know, however many, just to kind of make it work so that your point shoes have the base. I don't know if that makes sense, I hope it does. We just get our circle and we're going to just put it on the edge of our point shoe like this and kind of just hold it, balance it for now and just have it where we want it to be. I really like this because it gives you, it makes the sewing and the darning so much easier because it gives you a, a guide as you're sewing them. Okay, then I start on the left side of the shoe. It doesn't matter, you can start wherever is more comfortable for you, but that's just where I like to go. And just keeping the circle in place where you want it sort of and it is kind of tricky at first but you get used to it and then you're going to just go in there make sure you're in through the bottom and then coming out of the top of the circle of wool that you've got little tip is to use your other point you to push it through especially if you've done it for a few hours now like you're doing multiple pairs and your fingers are getting sore. Just bring that through and pull it all the way through. Okay, then literally you're just going to go around sewing. No extra knots, literally just one next to the other around. I'll show you again. Just going in. There. Pull it through. And if it gets, you know, a little caught, just kind of make sure it's not knotting or anything at the bottom and it's nice and smooth to pull through and then you can see it's starting to create that sort of platform barrier whatever you want to call it and we're just going to do that you just kind of insert sorry insert around here you can do it thicker if you want really thick darning you would insert down there if you want it really really just thin you would insert it right next to there I like it sort of in between more thin though because I don't want it too bulky um, you just kind of yeah insert it wherever there I don't know if you can really see that and then go through bring it out the only thing I will say with double doubling the thread I think it makes it a lot easier and you know it's time less time consuming because you don't have to go around I used to do one string of thread and then go around twice but I realized that was really taking up a lot more time than it needed to and I could literally just double it over and do it in the same amount of time so yeah the only thing is you can't really go back on your work so if you wanted you could try just doing one string to start with and just going around twice um, if you find you're getting knotted too easily or it's not really pulling through right, then I would do that. Generally I find it's fine. It's just if there's a mistake or if the wool breaks or something, it's quite hard to fix. But apart from that, it's a lot easier. Okay, I'm just going to go and do this around the whole point shoe. That's literally all you do, just go around the point shoe like that. Same at the back, just 
try and go through all the little, you know, nooks and crannies there as best as you can. Sometimes it does get difficult and as I said, my little hack is to use the other side, sorry, the other point you to help you get it through. I'm just going to put some YouTube or something on while I'm doing it and then I will come back to you guys. Also really quickly, I just realized sometimes it starts to, the ends of the thread starts to unravel. So if that happens, literally just try and hold it in place, don't get too annoyed by it. But it is a little bit annoying at first, so don't get me wrong, I do get that. But you get used to it and you kind of figure out how to work with it. Okay, I just realized that I need to tell you something when you get to the back of the point shoe. So you have this little bit of string there and you just like keep sewing along there. But you have these bits of wool from the beginning and they're just kind of there. And what I've realized is best to do, also because sometimes it's nicer to have it a little bit thicker at the back, is to just bring those bits of wool and then just sew them in. If you don't want them all the way, that's fine, but if they're long enough and you do want it all the way, then you can sew them in from literally the back of the point shoe and just sew all along there. Okay, we are pretty much at the end of the shoe. We've come right around back to the beginning here. At the end, what I do, sorry if you can't see my face, but I just wanna show you the shoe mostly. So we have literally this much room. I'm not sure if that's focused, but this much room from the beginning stitch and where we are now. And what I like to do is go in another time where we are just for the next stitch also you can do these a lot further apart or probably even closer together it just depends how you want it literally there's a lot of different ways you can do it this is just kind of the base how I do it and you can kind of change it up depending on what you need anyways at the end so we're gonna go in again to the shoe just as if we're doing another one and you bring it through a little bit there, so pull it through, but leave some of the loop, don't pull it all the way through basically. And then you're just gonna bring the needle in through that loop to make a knot and pull through. So it looks a little bit different and it's a little chunkier because there's a knot there. I know a lot of people actually do that, they knot every time they go around and it creates a very different look. It's something you can do, but I just do it at the end to, to sort of secure it. And then, okay, so I've got one with a knot and then I'm going to do that one more time. You get used to kind of how much space you need to be able to do this, but if not, just do it in the same spot really. Then I kind of go literally where that last, the first, sorry, stitch was, and I just insert there go through so this will be the very last one push it through sometimes you gotta give it a wiggle because it yeah it's very tight and then one more uh, knot there so then you've done two knots so it, you know it should be safe but no what we're gonna do then is just go through, make sure it's really tight so it's not too bulky then I literally just like to go through twice here in the same spot it can get a little bulky here if there's not a lot of room but once or twice go through literally no knot, just go through so that it's at the top okay that's not too bulky so we're gonna go one more time through in the same spot through 
Okay, so then the piece of wool is at the top there, and then you just pull it really tight, and then cut it off at the top there. Just there, right next to the... And then there might be a little fluffy bit kind of there, but it should be fine. And then that is it, and you have done your shoot. Honestly then, I like to cut these little ends if you didn't manage to sew them in. Also, if there's any bits that are a little bit fluffy, like up here or there, like you can't really see it, but either way, it's going to get dirty and kind of tack down to the shoe the more you dance on it. But that is it. That is the shoe finished and darned. And then obviously I would go in to sew the ribbons, but I'm not going to do that in today's video because I feel like everyone sort of knows how to do their ribbons or maybe, I don't know, my mum taught me. But in saying that, if you do want a video on how I sew my ribbons and my elastics, I can do that. But this is how it looks. I really like the way it looks. Actually, there it looks a little bit wonky. But just because I did one bit too thin. Just try and keep it mostly even, like on the same line. See how it goes like thicker and then it's a bit thinner and then it goes down again. But that's fine. It doesn't really bother me. But it looks the best if it's all in the same line. If it's your first try and it's kind of a bit wonky, that is fine. Don't worry. The more you practice, the better you will get. And I did not always do it like this. It took practice to get better. Also, some people, I'm not sure, it doesn't always work for me. I'm just going to do it here. Some people do like a standing test. Sometimes it works like that. And it's able to stand up on its own. But honestly, I kind of hate when people say, oh, it has to stand up. That just means you might have very bulky darning. Oh, my camera is running out. Okay. But yeah, it definitely does not need to stand up on its own. That's kind of just a myth. But if it does, that's kind of a bonus. It means you've done some good darning, I guess. But it doesn't mean it's bad if it doesn't stand up. Thank you guys for watching. That is how I darn my shoes. I hope you understood everything. Please comment down below if you have any questions. I will try to respond to them. Or feel free to DM me on Instagram. I generally try and get through them all and answer them. That was it for today's video. I hope it makes sense and let me know if you try darning your shoes like this. I would love to see your results and how you did. I love you guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye.